Hey guys, so we're going to learn the solving systems by um, using the substitution method. And I have to first of all say I apologize if you hear background noise. Um, I decided to record myself teaching this when the basketball team decided to run up and down the hallway. So if you hear some pounding, that's just that they're running in the background. Um, so anyways, we um, are going to talk about substitution method and there's actually a lot of things to talk about when it comes to substitution method. Um, but we're going to go through just a couple easy levels of how do you solve an equate or a system of equations using this method. So the steps are already listed in your notes. You'll see them up here on the screen. Instead of me talking through them, I'm just going to talk them through with the examples. So let's go ahead and start with example number one. For example number one, our goal is to figure out what x value and what y value will make both of these um, equations true. You're going to first look for an equation that has an isolated variable. So as you'll see, the first equation says y equals 3x. So since y is isolated, we're going to box that in. So I want all of you to go ahead and put a box around the y. Now we're going to go to the second equation, and we're going to cross off the y like so. And what we're going to do is plug 3x in its place. Because if y equals 3x, then that means that we can replace y with what it equals. So we're going to rewrite this as x plus 3x equals negative 32. Once you do that, then it's just easy solving equation problem. We're going to combine the like terms, 1x plus 3x is 4x, and then we're going to divide by 4 on both sides. In lieu of me showing the division by 4, I'm just going to go ahead and jump down to my answer. So I know that x equals negative 8. Now remember from yesterday when we talked about the graph method, our goal is to find an x and a y. So we're looking for an ordered pair that works in the uh, for the system. So I need to write down that x equals negative 8, which means I still need to find y. What I'm going to do is take this and I'm going to plug it back into either equation. But the easiest equation to always go with is the one that's already isolated. So if I plug negative 8 in for x, then I'm going to have y equals 3 times negative 8 which of course equals negative 24. So negative 24 is my y value. So if you were to use the graph method that we did yesterday, you would find that these two lines cross at the point negative 8, negative 24. Now the reason that we don't always use the graph method is because when we have really big numbers like negative 32, it just doesn't make sense to use a bunch of graph paper to graph a point that's that large. So this is an alternative way to find the solution. All right, let's go ahead and move on to example number two. I'd like for you to go ahead and box in the isolated variable and try plugging it in by yourself. All right, so what we should notice at this time is x is isolated. And we're going to mark out the x in the other equation. So we're going to rewrite this as 2 times negative 4y. So we're going to plug in what x equals here. Bring down the minus 3y equals negative 11. Now we're going to go ahead and multiply this together to get negative 8y minus 3y equals negative 11. And because these are like terms, we can add the negative 8 to the negative 3 to get negative 11y. And then to isolate y, we'll divide by negative 11. So negative 11 divided by negative 11 equals positive 1. So our solution so far is something, whatever the x value is, and 1. Like I said on the previous problem, we're going to take the 1, we're going to plug it back into either equation. The 1 that's isolated is the easiest 1. So if we plug 1 back in here, we'll have x equals... This says, I'm going to erase that so you can see it, it says negative 4 times y, so we're going to take negative 4 times 1, which equals negative 4. So we know that our solution for this example is negative 4, 1. And, like I said yesterday, you can always check your answer by taking the negative 4, 1 and plugging it into both equations to see if they're true. If you find out that one of them is false, then you know that you've made a mistake. Alright, let's move on to example number 3. So, example number three is going to have something a little different, so make sure you pay attention, because I would say that this is probably the one type of problem where most students make their really dumb mistakes. 
So again, y is the one that's isolated. So we're going to take out the y in the other equation. And when we rewrite this, we're going to say negative 2x minus 3. But when we plug in the negative 3x minus 7, we want to put in parentheses because the negative 3 is being multiplied to y. So that means it needs to be multiplied to the whole thing. So I'm going to write parentheses, negative 3x minus 7, and now I can bring down the equals 21. All right. So that's one reason why students make this, make a mis or one place they make mistakes is because they forget the parentheses. So that's one error that we want to avoid. The second error is just making sure that we remember that the number that's being distributed is a negative here. So when you distribute negative three, then what we're going to get is negative two x, we'll drop that down. Negative three times negative three x is positive nine x. Negative three times negative 21 is positive 21 and then we'll bring down the other equals 21. We're going to combine our like terms together to get 7x because negative 2 plus 9 is 7. Bring down the plus 21 equals 21, and now it's just an easy two-step equation. We will subtract 21 from both sides. That gives us 7x equals 0. Divide by 7. You don't have to show the division step if you don't want. x will equal 0. So we know that our solution so far is zero comma something. All right, so now we have to find y. So we're gonna plug zero back into the isolated equation. That's going to give us zero for x. So we're gonna have negative three times zero, which is zero, and zero minus seven is negative seven. I'll also work that off to the side. So if you did not capture what I just said, then you can see it. I plug zero in for x. I got zero minus seven, which we know is negative seven. All right, so I wanna give you a moment to catch up, ask questions. For some of your classes, Mrs. Sims is in here. Mrs. Sims is great at math and uh, science, so she would be more than happy to answer your questions. So just raise your hand, she can come around and answer your questions, or you can just lean over to someone near you if you have a question. So I'll give you about 20 seconds to do that, and then we'll go back to example four. Alrighty, so let's go ahead and move on to example number four. All right, so example number four, let's look at what's isolated. Y is isolated, we're going to cross off the Y in the other problem. We're going to rewrite the equation as 5X plus 5. And again, it's super important that we take this expression, we put it in parentheses when we plug it in so that we can distribute the five to everything bring down the equals 13. All right, so we're gonna drop down our 5x. We're gonna multiply the five to everything in the parentheses. Five times negative x gives us negative five x. Five times one gives us five. And then we can bring down the equals 13. Now, something interesting happens with this problem. As you'll notice, the five x minus five x cancels out. So that's just going to leave us with five equals 13. So this is one of our special cases where we have to say, is this a true statement or a false statement? Well, obviously five does not equal 13. That is a false statement. Therefore, our answer will be no solution. So if we were to graph this problem, let's rewind back to what we learned yesterday. If we were to graph this problem, the types of problems where we result in no solution is where we have two lines that are parallel. So these would be two lines that are parallel, and that's why it results in no solution, because it's never going to cross. They're never going to have a common point. Alrighty, so there's example four. We're going to go ahead and finish off by doing example number five, and this is our last one to do for today. So the question that you should always ask yourself is, which equation has the isolated variable? Well, if you'll notice here, both of them have an isolated variable. They both are y equals. So what's cool about this is y equals x plus 1 and y also equals negative 4x plus 10. So if they both equal y, 
then that means that these two expressions are equal to one another. So we're going to have x plus 1 equals negative 4x plus 10. So it's just as simple as taking our two expressions and separating them with an equal sign. So we're going to go ahead and use our variable on both sides rules, add 4x to the x, which gives us 5x. And then we're going to subtract 1 from the 10, and that's going to give us 5x equals 9. All right, I know I went through that fast, so I'll let you catch up here. Here at the very end, you're going to notice that 5 and x are being multiplied. So then that means we have to divide. Now, the reason I'm pausing here to show you this is because it's not like um, the others where it's a nice, pretty integer. It ends up being 9 fifths. So we can write that x equals 9 over 5, or you're welcome to divide 9 by 5 to get 1.8. So what we know is that x value is 1.8. All right, now, we need to take that answer and we need to plug it back in. Well, my advice is always to plug it back into the isolated equation. Well, both of them are isolated, so you just really need to put on your future um, thinking caps and think about which one's easier to do. Well, if I plug it into the second equation, I'm going to have to multiply the 1.8 by negative 4 and add 10. I'm going to have two steps to do. Versus, if I plug it into the first one, this just says x plus 1. So that's really easy. All i got to do is take the 1.8 plus the 1, and that gives me 2.8. So my solution for this problem is 1.8, 2.8. This is another reason why we use the substitution method. This problem is a decimal answer. It would be very difficult to find 1.8 and 2.8 on your graph paper. Therefore, when we have decimal answers, we have to lean on a different method, like the substitution method that you learned today. All right, well, that's all we have for today. Um, I've missed some of you all week long, and I look forward to seeing all of you on Monday. Like I said, Mrs. Sims is in some of your classes, so if she is in your class today and you're struggling with this, please, please, please raise your hand. She'd be more than happy to help you. I do not want you working with partners on your assignment. I do want your assignment, I want your assignment to be done independently. However, if you need to lean over to someone near you to ask a quick question, that would be acceptable. I hope you guys have a great day. I hope you have a great weekend and I'll see you on Monday.